Welcome to Monaco Videos May Art Project. Fox asked us to look into our stash and find something to paint. I didn't really look into my stash of images, but into my stash of memories. I wanted to paint Picasso's nude woman in red chair, not to make a perfect copy, but to understand how the curves and lines work together. I've used gouache on board and the board has a kind of a linen finish, maybe a little bit like canvas. I grabbed a few of my not watercolour brushes and, uh, and a red pencil to start with. Picasso's Nude Woman in a Red Chair is a work that belongs to a sequence of portraits that Pablo Picasso made of his young lover Marie Therese Walter. The paintings are beautiful in my eyes. Marie Therese is always represented with such sensuous curves. In this painting even the arms of the chair have an exaggerated echo to the rounded forms of Marie Therese's body. The face has a double image, which I haven't captured at all, but if you look at the um, of the original painting, uh, you'll be able to see that there's a double image in the face, and the right side can be seen as the face of a lover in profile, kissing her on the lips. So this young woman's name was Marie Therese Walter, and she was one of Picasso's greatest muses. He saw her one day through a shop window in Paris. He waited until she came out and he told her that she had an interesting face and she wanted that he wanted to paint her portrait. He said, I'm sure we shall do great things together. I'm Picasso. Which really didn't mean anything to Marie Therese. Young women of the time didn't really read or pay attention to papers and that sort of thing, so she had no idea who this man was, but... She really liked his tie. It was black and red and she uh, kept it for the rest of her life actually. But he um, he wanted to see her again and he made a date for the next day. He said he'd, he'd, he'd come and pick her up and he was true to his word and so was she. So 17 year old Marie Therese Walter met Pablo Picasso and he took her to a cafe and then he took her to lunch. And then he took, his, took her to his studio. And he looked at her. He looked at her in profile. And he looked at her face. And then she left. And as she left, he said, come back tomorrow. And after that, she did. And it was always tomorrow's. They started a conversation which was renewed every day. And he told her that she had saved his life, but at 17, she just really didn't know what he was talking about. He was still married to a woman named Olga. They had a son together. And each night after he uh, finished in the studio, he would go home to Olga. Olga didn't ask questions. His, uh, her husband's absences were increasingly frequent and he returned very late at night. But as long as he came back, her honour was satisfied. Meanwhile, Picasso drew Marie Therese. Superb drawings. And he became a young lover again. Marie Therese was fresh and spontaneous. Not shy but reserved, well brought up, but not educated like the young woman who in those days used to be trained in social duties. They kept their relationship secret. It was a calm and peaceful time. They said nothing to anyone, and no one knew about the work that he was producing. He was completely devoted to his art and to Marie Therese. Then one day, Marie Therese found she was pregnant. 
She later recounted that Picasso fell to his knees, wept and told her it was the greatest happiness of his life. Their daughter Maya was born in 1935. Marie Therese had given birth under general anaesthetic, dangerous medical fashion of the time, and there had been complications. Maya didn't move when she was born. Picasso, frightened, had carried out an emergency baptism, throwing water over the little body as the priest would have done if he'd been there. And he tried to administer the first and last rites, thinking his baby girl was going to die. But with the splash of the water, Maya came back to life. Maya's start to her life was not dissimilar to Picasso's own. He was born after a difficult delivery too, and was such a weak and small baby that the midwife thought he was stillborn and left him on the table to attend to his mother. It was Picasso's uncle, a doctor named Don Salvador, who saved him. Doctors at the time used to smoke big cigars, and Picasso's uncle was no exception. When he saw the little baby lying there, he blew smoke into the baby's face. And little baby Pablo reacted with a grimace and a bellow of fury. Marie Therese's relationship with Picasso lasted 14 years before she became aware of the details of Picasso's new love life. She knew she had to share him with his new lover and those that came after. Maya was brought up believing the fiction that her father worked a long way away. Maria Therese Walter killed herself five months after hearing of Pablo Picasso's death. She was 68 and he was 91. La pluie d'automne frappe le carreau et ça me rend mélanco. Je me sens coincé derrière ce piano. Je vais faire ton numéro. Ça sonne. Tu ne réponds pas. Ça sonne, tu n'es pas là. La pluie s'arrête, je sens aussitôt comme font les escargots. On sort ensemble dès qu'il fait beau. La coquille sur notre dos Je marche Jusque chez toi Je frappe Tu n'es pas là Chaque matin, je reprends le même chemin. J'allume un feu, je retourne au lit et j'attends qu'il soit midi. Je rêve, je pense à toi. Je rêve. Quand vient le soir, je descends. 
sans te voir, je reste assis dans le noir. Je sens tes mains posées sur mon dos, ton souffle contre ma peau. C'est bien, c'est bien.